Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is October 19th, 2011. Let's get right into the charts here. There's a lot to cover. First off, we're going to talk, take a look at the S&P 500 E-mini futures. You'll see that the futures are trading higher, uh, off the lows, I should say, by a little bit. Still trading negative on the day by about two points. Really not a bad showing when you look at yesterday's uh, big advance late in the day. I know the market um, was up already yesterday, so someone was expecting news out of Europe, and they sure enough got it, um, talking about a $2 trillion European bank bailout. Um, it happened to be a false uh, report, but either way, market soared yesterday um, and finished up 180 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average by the closing bell. This morning, we're getting a little bit of a pullback. It's really not all that much. Last night, there was some disappointing earnings. There were some good earnings. We'll go over that in just a few minutes. Um, again, we're getting more chatter out of Europe today. Um, we'll see how that all plays out. But right now, it looks like um, there'll be this summit coming this weekend, and we'll, we'll really get a little clarity. There are massive protests and uh, some rioting going on in Greece today. It looks, to be a four, it looks like there's a 48-hour strike going on, uh, shutdown of the government and uh, all public services. So we'll see how that uh, develops. But again, it, it's, it's really um, a tragedy to see what's going on in, uh, in Greece these days. And um, it looks like uh, right now that, that, that situation remains unresolved. Um, we'll see if Greece does get the next tranche from the uh, IMF and the ECB. However, uh, it's looking more and more like it's going to be um, um, more, more, more haircuts there for bondholders. Originally, it was thought to be 60%, could be some more. We also had Moody's cut Spain's uh, bond rating yesterday. I believe that the Spanish outlook is now uh, down to A1 with a negative outlook. Uh, again, this, this should go on throughout Europe. I, I got to think that Italy would be next. France would be after that. Uh, Belgium. Um, Portugal and Ireland, we already know the situation there. But uh, in any case, that's what we're dealing with. Um, we'll see if the European problem expands, but right now it doesn't seem to be a worry for the markets. The European indexes are actually all trading higher. You have the French CAC 40, that's up to 6 tenths of 1%. The German DAX is up um, just about 9 tenths of 1%. And you have the FTSE, which is not part of the euro, but that's up 9 tenths of 1%. So, um, you know, all the European indexes, the major European indexes are holding up well today. Really not a problem. Last night, you got a little bit of a rebound in Asia. However, the Shanghai index did finish negative, um, I believe, by two-tenths of 1%. But the Nikkei and the Hang Seng both rebounded, and the Indian Sensex also caught a sharp rebound uh, yesterday. So that was up 2%. So Indian ADRs, if the market's strong today, they may be able to bounce. Um, they actually held up very well yesterday. And um, we'll see how it goes from here. But again, this market is a little bit overstretched. Uh, really no pullbacks here. It, it looks euphoric at the moment. And that's the way markets are. They go to extreme lows and then they go to extreme highs. So right now, the, the, uh, the extreme high is in play and uh, the markets are somewhat euphoric at the moment. So we have to respect it. And um, until we see further declines, that's what we're looking at. Now, first thing you want to take a look at if the... Uh, markets are holding up so well and the futures are trying to get a bounce they're only down one point that must mean that the dollar is down sure enough <clears throat> you can see the US dollar index falling here that's really what you have to look at watch the dollar the dollar will tell you everything you need to know when the dollar falls the market rallies you saw it yesterday as well um, we just scroll back the hands of time here you can see the dollar fell for most of the day and look at the big fall when that two two billion dollar rumor was uh, two billion euro rumor was spilled out, uh, spread out over here, and you can see how the dollar just plummeted. So again, it's all about the dollar. If the dollar goes down, the markets inflate. The dollar goes up, the markets deflate. It's pretty much that cut and dry. Uh, a couple of other things to talk about real quick. Some some stocks that reported today were Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley right now closed um, is trading at sixteen dollars and sixty four cents. <clears throat> Yesterday closed at sixteen dollars and sixty three cents. So nothing great for Morgan Stanley. The numbers. Um, you could read them for yourself. I don't really even care about them or pay attention. I really just care about how the market's reaction is. And um, the stock is holding up today. If the stock does rally a little bit, traders should watch for a move maybe to 1750. I wouldn't expect much more after that, though. Um, again, decent little um, move off the lows here, but Morgan Stanley started out higher, came back in. 
there is nothing good on those earnings from what I could tell. Um, Apple reported last night after the bell. That's the big one. This morning you'll see Apple's trading right at $401. Uh, was a little bit lower uh, yesterday in the pre-market this morning. However, it has bounced back a little bit. Um, they missed their numbers pretty clearly. But again, you know, it's Apple um, after earnings. And if the market stays euphoric, the stock will maybe rebound a little bit. Overall, Apple uh, right now um, not weighing on the market as much as you think it would be. Um, the, the NASDAQ futures were down about 22, 23 points in overnight trading. And you can see how they've really rocketed right back up as the dollar has fallen. So when the dollar goes down, you know, not just the S&P and the Dow and the commodities complexes will go up, but the NASDAQ will also rally. And that seems to be the case today. Uh, a couple of other stocks that we should look at, Intel. Intel reporting earnings after the bell. Very, very good move for Intel. The stock's trading at 24.29. I don't know if there's much more upside for Intel here. Um, I suppose as long as the markets hold up, Intel could go a little bit higher. But already the stock is starting to get stretched and it's extended. And the stock has a history of selling off after earnings. So um, be careful there with Intel. If the markets hold up well today, the stock probably has a little bit more upside. But I wouldn't look for too much. Um, let's take a look at Yahoo. They reported also. <clears throat> you can see, <coughs> excuse me. You can see Yahoo here is um, trading at 1608. The stock is really um, somewhat stuck a little bit. Uh, here's the daily chart. We closed at fifteen dollars and forty-seven cents. It's a nice little pop. I guess it could move higher with the overall markets. It's above all the major moving averages. So it may have a little bit more upside. Um, hard to pinpoint Yahoo exactly, but I'm going to say 1650 is a very, very good resistant point, uh, just short term. And then the stock probably goes to $17. I don't even know if it has enough juice to get up there. But either way, um, watch Yahoo here. It's in play at least this morning. Here's a stock that had terrible earnings, but is trading higher. And we're going to take a look at it. It's Abbott Labs. Uh, you can see the ticker symbol ABT. Stock is up significantly. The earnings were terrible, but the company is going to do a spin. Uh, it's going to spin off one of its um, operation units. So uh, again, uh, whenever a company does a spin off of a, and breaks it up into two companies, the market likes to see that, and uh, the stock is trading higher. But um, so there's really not a lot to say for Abbott overall. Uh, I guess the um, you know it's extended here. I wouldn't really own it here. I think it's all baked into the cake already. Um, the stock went as high as 58. It's already begun to pull back a little bit. It's stretched and extended. Uh, again, I wouldn't expect much upside at all from Abbott Labs at this point, uh, even with that spinoff. Another stock that is down this morning is Cree. Cree's trading just a little bit lower. Uh, looks like the stock closed at 27.78 uh, yesterday, trading at 26.51. I'm not seeing a whole lot for Cree on the charts right now. It really looks to be in a range. Uh, right now, the, the, the major part of the range would be $24. would be a ton of support if it got down there. I'm not even sure it gets there today. As long as the U.S. dollar index falls, I think the markets will, will hold up well. And in fact, you can see the, um, the S&P 500 E-mini futures just went positive, And that tells us that the dollar is falling further. And sure enough, it is. So again, futures just went positive on, that, uh, on the dollar sell-off. And this is what we're looking at. So again, watch gold oil today. Um, you take a look at the USO. It looks like it has a little bit more upside in the cards to me. If the dollar falls a little bit more, I think USO could trade a little bit higher. Um, if you take a look at the GLD today, GLD is, is trading a little bit lower. Um, closed at 161.84, making a little bit mo of a move higher. Every time gold rallies up, it's telling you there's inflation in the market. Um, gold seems to be trading somewhat with the market, but lagging a little bit. Um, I really don't see anything great here, but nonetheless, it is worth uh, following, keeping a close eye on. SLV, same scenario there. SLV closed at $31.33. Today, it's trading at $30, $31.23 at the moment. But um, again, this is another one here that is uh, can, can trade a little bit higher, I suppose, but it's just not that great of a pattern in place. Okay, with that said, everybody, um, it's going to be another volatile trading day. This is Options Expiration Week. There will be a lot of games played by the institutions. It is also Whipsaw Wednesday. Look for a very, very volatile trading session. Again, expect the unexpected, and we'll leave it at that. Um, those of you in the chat room, I'll see you on the microphone at 930. And those of you 
that are out there trading. Best of luck, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great trading day, everybody.